Uh, a little bit of a video on uh, boat engines and different things that you have to do when things break. So I just bought this boat. Um, it's a 19 foot Sea Ray. Can't see much of it. It's covered up right now. Kind of. Maybe get a shot of the side there for you. Uh, pretty nice boat. Has a couple issues. A little bit of a soft spot in the floor here and also up in the front, but shouldn't be too bad. Um, took it out. Very first time that I took it out. Barely got out of dock and started to give it a little bit of juice and all of a sudden, nothing. Engine running, but we ain't going nowhere. So, I thought that was the prop. Uh, the hub and the prop had spun. You know, still kind of you know piss you off. You just bought this thing and it's supposed to be your skookum ready to frit, ready to uh, roll you know, on the water and everything. Um, obviously, it wasn't. So get a tow, pull it up out of the water, not the prop. It's going in gear. So the only other thing is this dude right here. Now this engine, of course, is reverse right now. Usually, you cannot see this. This is down in the back, and I'll show you guys that later when I put it back. Um, but this is your engine coupler and this is what connects the engine to your out drive there's usually splines inside of here and I'll show you guys a new one here in a minute as well when I get that out of the truck and that meshes with the splines on the out drive and you mix things go well you guys can see there's no splines in there at all there's nothing so what causes this to happen is that the engine is out of alignment. Down here, you can see there's a nut here and a nut over there. And those, you can change to change how high each side of the engine sits and how high the front of the engine sits. And that puts it into alignment, and there's a special tool that you have to use in order to do that. Um, which, once again, I'll show you later on in the video when we get to that point. So since it was out of alignment, the the shaft was sitting in here. Um, you know, instead of being perfectly straight, I know that's not perfectly straight, but imagination, it was sitting you know slightly down or up or you know whatever, and then that was constantly wearing on the splines in there. This is designed to be the weak point, and on this side of things, the prop first. Is, is your weakest point of everything and then this is your next weak point because the idea is this is cheaper to replace and fix than the drive shaft or the outdrive outdrive are thousands in parts alone this thing I got it from West Marine for 150 bucks so I mean it takes a lot of time to do but you know, the part itself isn't very expensive compared to outdrive being several thousand or the shaft being 500 to a thousand depending on what all you need of the shaft or you know whatever so it's a good thing to have weak points and things and Mercruiser did that here and you know it, it worked you know it did what it was supposed to do the only problem is it sucks because you gotta pull the engine to fix it so I'm going to show you guys how to change this out and I thought about doing the video after I already had the engine to this point so you didn't get to see what you got to do to undo it but if you've ever pulled an engine in a car it's essentially the same honestly I mean you just unhook everything you unhook all the electrical all the this has power steering yours may or may not some do some don't um, you unhook your exhaust ports here, um, which is just the rubber boots back there, uh, your fuel, your electrical, all that stuff. You just unhook all that, and then you got to find something to hoist up on, which I'm using the buddy's garage here. you got a big old steel beam, which is great. So much better than what I've done in the past using a tree. Um, and hoist her up, and then... I like turning it around that way I can sit here on the floor and have a somewhat comfortable spot to work in and probably shouldn't have extension cords sitting in the water in the bilge um, and pull all this off. So what you got to do is find my, you got to pull off this bell housing here. 
which is what that's called. Um, a lot of this stuff is very similar to a car. This engine is literally the same thing that you would find in a lot of cars and pickups from GM in, well, really everything from 70s all the way up into mid to late 90s, honestly. I mean, it is essentially the same engine they changed. Yeah, eventually they got TBI and that kind of thing up there and different electronical um, ignition, but the engine itself is the same. Really, I think the block has remained the same up until the mid-2000s on these things. It, all it is is a small block Chevy 305 is what this is. You may have a 260 horsepower, which is just a small block Chevy 350. You may have a one of the V6s. I don't remember what the horsepower on those is, but that's just a Chevy V6. I mean, and that's literally a small block Chevy with two cylinders lopped off. All this stuff back here is exactly the same between all of the Mercury's or engines in the 80s, um, and even sooner than that. Late 60s all the way up into late 80s, all this is the same. And then it changed a little bit, but the same principle is there. It just looks a little bit different. So what you're going to do, there's a whole bunch of these bolts all the way around here. you got to pull all those off. And then... No. Okay. And you may have to pull the starter off. I don't remember if you do or not. We'll find out here in a minute. If you do or not. So, I can't hold the camera and do that at the same time. I don't have a mount. So, I'm going to pull that off, and then I'll show you guys what's in the, on the inside of that. I've got the bell housing off here. And all it is, it's a big piece of aluminum. That's all that it is. Nothing too crazy. Doesn't weigh a whole lot. And that reveals your coupler and your flywheel in here. Now, on this particular one, when you go to get your coupler, you're going to want to take your serial number with you. And there's a couple places that you can get that from. On the bell housing, wherever it went. Oh, no, not on the bell housing, I'm sorry. On the back of the block here, there is a serial number for the engine. Up on front here... There is a, another, now you kind of see it, serial number for the engine as well. And that gives you a whole bunch of different information about the engine. Um, then, there's the other one. Oh, on here, your transom assembly, serial number, which you you really don't need that for this, but if you ever do need your transom assembly serial number, that's on your uh, intake cap thing. I don't know what you call that, carburetor cap? I don't know. Um, but it, your serial number is several different places. It's also on your out drive on the side of it. It's on the transom assembly back there somewhere. That's what that whole big black mess is. It's you got several serial numbers and several different things, but the main one that you need is the one that's either here on the block that should always be there, or up here on the sticker. The sticker may wear off over time, but this one here on the block that should always be here, and you'll need that. On my particular one, it came up with two part numbers for the engine coupler. It came up with this guy, and then it came up with. One where the mounting thing was like a triangle kind of setup instead. Which, you know, obviously only one will work. They're not inter interchangeable at all. So what I had to do is stick my phone down in there before I pulled this and look through a little gap that you get between there with the camera and then bring it back out watch it to see which one I have. Because, you know, they're both... Roughly the same price. One's a little bit more expensive than the other, but I don't want the wrong part because then I pull this thing and I have the wrong part, and then it's sitting in my buddy's garage really a lot longer than I want it to and what he wants it to. So that's no good.
So make sure you do that. Make sure you get the right one. Take the serial number with you. Hopefully you don't have the same issues I did with having to. So now, in order to get this thing off, there are six bolts that go all the way around here. And you got to pull those off. You can't obviously get to them with a ratchet because this thing's in the way. So you got to get in there with a wrench and pull that off. And then you can pull that off and you can also pull the flywheel off if you want to. I mean, really no reason to. It, I mean, I guess if you wanted to inspect all the teeth, you could. But just running my finger around it, it feels pretty good and it looks like it's in good shape. It doesn't look like it's been gnarred on or anything. Really, I mean, the, the engine looks like it's in really good shape. It doesn't look like it has a whole lot of time on it, which is a good thing. So... I'll get these pulled off and I'll pull that off and you can see what that looks like actually in your hand. Alright, so I've got that off. I went ahead and took the flywheel off too. Uh, I wanted to take a look and see how the starter gear looked in here and it, it looks like it's fine. No you know, serious wear or anything like that on it. Um, but this is what's in here behind the flywheel and this of course is a flywheel. That's what it looks like and it, it is heavy. It's cast iron I think. Um, what happened on mine, taking this thing off, is these studs here, two of them, came out with the nuts here. They're not supposed to do that. It's supposed to just stay into the crank there. So, now, you got to figure out how to get the uh, the nuts off of the studs because I can't even get them out of the broken coupler with them like that so I gotta work on that probably gonna take another nut throw it onto the other side here and then you know do it that way um, what I'm gonna do is put some thread locker on all of this the last thing you want to happen is that your thing, your coupler here, comes off. That's no good. That's a bad day. That's a very bad day. So I'm going to put some serious amount of thread locker on all of this and do that. I'll get this off and then I'll get the new one out. There you guys can see what it's supposed to look like and we'll start putting this thing back together. And so here's the new one of these. And as you can see, there's a pretty big difference there, as far as what you see. Um, and I got the studs out. And what I'm going to do is take some of this stuff. For this, you want to use the red for the heavy duty applications. If you look at the description on the blue kind, it says for stuff that is supposed to be taken apart and put back together. Um, this says heat and special tools needed for disassembly, meaning it ain't going to come apart, and that's what I want. So, I'm going to smother this and that where the studs go in here. Sorry about that. Here and here. I'm going to smother that in it, then I'm also going to smother the uh, other side of the studs in there as well before I put the nuts back on, put this on. Because I have no intention of taking this back apart back here. So, that is garbage. This can go back. And all I'm going to do to put this back, you want to make sure you put it back the right way if this happens to you. Uh, I've done this procedure, well, not necessarily this exact because of this reason, but I've done, you know, this, and this part, put it back together on three different boats now on and on all of them at least two of these things have come out so this is nothing new is to be expected so you want to make sure you put them back the right way though the long parts out um, I mean just mimic what they all do if they all come out then make sure you got the long amount of threads to the outside and just thread it back in there and go and all I'm gonna do is take I'm gonna throw it in by hand and then take a pair of vice grips and don't put on the threads. What do you do? You don't put on the threads. But put it here on this part where there's no threads. And 
you know, tighten it down as tight as I can get it with these, and then call that good. I mean, they, they shouldn't go anywhere, especially once you tighten down the nuts on there. I mean, that's going to put pressure on both sides of all of this. So they shouldn't go anywhere, especially with Loctite on there. Should be good. I'll get that done, and then I'll show you guys what we're looking at. All right, so once you get this all um, back on your flywheel first, obviously, um, and try and line up the, in, not indention, but the pattern that's on the back of the flywheel with the crank again. I call it a little alien head, because that's what it looks like. So that way it, it goes back on there the same way. That's how it came from the factory. That's how you want to put it back. Um, so then what you're going to want to do is take your Loctite here and, you know, put some on top here, tighten that down, some on the bottom here, and then tighten both of those down to pull this all in together and get it tight and snug up against there. Now you're going to want to work pretty quickly because it dries fast and it starts doing its thing pretty fast. Um, so you, you're going to want to work quickly as far as getting that done. Now, if you don't know how to do this stuff, all you do, you take it and you go, whoops, you run along the deal here, and you just run a line, that's a bit much, but that's okay. You run a line across that, and then you put your nut on, Let's see if I can do this one handed, most likely not. You put your nut on, and then you want to get your wrench and tighten it down. You're going to want to put your washer on first, because if you don't, the washer is just going to take all that with it, and it ain't going to do no bit of good for you, and you just end up wasting it. But, like, like I said, you just want to put a line on there, and run that across it, and then tighten it down. I'm not going to video tighten it down. You guys should know how to tighten a nut. Also, I need to have him hold the engine. So, uh, I'll get all that done, then I'll show you putting the bell housing back. Alright, so got that put back on there. And. There. Now it's working. Got that put back on there. Um, so, now it's time to put the bell housing back on. Now, usually, while I'm at this point, I would go and power wash all this out and everything. You'll get all that crud out of there and yucky, and I don't like it. I don't like looking at dirty stuff. Power washer is the most amazing thing ever made. But I don't have access to water out here, nor am I going to make that kind of mess in my buddy's garage. It's nice enough of him to let me use it, much less for me to destroy it with a power washer. So we're just going to roll with it, and I'll just have to deal with it. Um, so putting the bell housing back on... Obviously, it's going to go the same way that it came. And there's two alignment tabs. One here, and then there's one over on the other side. And you just want to you know, get all that line back up and put it back on. Now you're... Yeah, I'm going to need... No, maybe not. There we go. Okay. Didn't need two hands to do it. No, it ain't going to stay until you... It's not going to stay until you get your, uh, your bolts in there. Um, you want to make sure though that you're going to have all these little tab things uh, on mine here it's for the power steering hoses on yours it may be for wiring or power steering or it, it all depends on what you're working on and how they decided to run all the stuff on it but you're going to have these things they go on the outside of here do not put them between the bell housing and the block don't do it because it's going to put the bell housing all at a weird angle and crock draw and everything. That's what holds up the engine. You get it like that, you risk a chance of cracking it. You crack that, there, there's a chance of the engine dropping and falling and breaking. And No, just don't do it, don't deal with it. Just leave it alone. So, like I said, put them on the outside of the deal there. And what I always do, every time I take anything apart, I lay out all my bolts and all my nuts. So... I laid it out starting on my left side, each bolt across, then they all go back to where they came from. You know, over there, I know the far one is the left side, the closest one to me is the far side, so that way, you know, it, it all goes back to the way that it came from. 
Those back there are the rear engine mount bolts right there. That's the front engine mount nuts, and then those are the carburetor um, bolts. I was going to lift this with one of these dudes. These things are the best thing ever made. I love these. But this has a different setup for the bolts on there than I anticipated. And I don't have just extra bolts laying around like I usually do. And I can't find anything here that would help me. So I just did it and I took a chain. And the nice thing about the boat engines, they usually have hooks here. One in the back and then one in the front here. So you can just take a chain and run it through there. I've got a bolt in front and then a hook on back and then run it through your hoist here. And then up into the chain it works good it does good enough for what i need to do you know I don't, I don't care if it's pretty or not so um i'll get all that put back on all the bolts put back together and all that stuff and uh show you guys what that looks like and then we're ready to put this thing back so there she sets back in there now how i got that you know just flip it around you got to work it around and get it back in there uh, the two bolts back here in the back, they just slide down in there. Now, this one, when it went in, it pretty well lined itself up, honestly. I uh, fiddled a little bit with getting the exhaust boots lined up. And then it just kind of set itself down on the front mounts. And the rear mounts were pretty well there. Um, the other two that I've messed with did not go that easy. It... It took some work to get them in. So, I mean, yours may go as easy as this one did. Just plop it down and boom, it's there. You may have to fiddle with it, you may have to push on it, and just work it around to get everything lined up. Um, if you're working on an older boat that has the pre-alpha outdrive and then what you're going to end up with is on the bottom of here there's nuts on each side and that's you know what that goes into those nuts when you take these bolts out are going to fall unless you catch them and you know that's fine and everything when you're pulling the engine because you're pulling the engine and it's going to be out of the way anyway who cares the problem is when you're putting this thing back in there you got to get your hand down in here, not much room. I mean, my hands, they're fairly big, they're, but, you know, my new ones are the, the biggest hands in the world. You got to get them down in there and, you know, get that nut started on that bolt. And then, you know, you can just go at it with the ratchet or um, slow on an impact. Very slow. Don't just hit it because you'll strip things out. On this one, the Alpha... It actually kept the nuts in there. There's like a little retainer kind of thing. And it kept the nuts in there so they didn't just fall down. So then when it plopped back in, I could just set the engine down, put the bolts in there, and you know now I'm gonna thread it in. So you know, they're they're ready to go. Which is great. I love that. Thank you very much, Merc Cruiser, for doing that. Um, what I'm going to have to do now. And you should do this every time you pull the engine. No matter what you pull the engine for, which, I mean, really, that's the only reason why you should, but no matter what you pull the engine for, you need to realign it. Always, every time, every time. Cannot stress that enough. Because um, if you don't, it will make the same thing. It will make this happen. That's no good. That is bad, that is expensive, that is time consuming, and it sucks. I don't I don't like doing it. Nobody should like doing it. Because this takes way too much time to do. I should be out on the water in this thing, not doing them this. So, to align it, you're going to need an alignment tool, uh, which I've got sitting on the back swim deck right now. But the way that you do it is there's these nuts. Here, I'll go over this side. This nut right here, and there's one on each side of the engine. You go up and down with it, and that's what you use to align the engine. 
and what you're going to do is you're going to take the alignment tool and I'll go out there in a minute and you're going to want to slide it in and it should just slide in slide out without any real force to it just kind of easy in and out um, there's going to be a little bit of a force there but not there shouldn't be where you got to push on or anything but just one hand in out and that's it um, you're going to want to put a little bit of grease on there that way it, it assists with that, and also that way you don't mar up anything. So, I'm going to go get some grease because I didn't bring any with me. And then I will show you guys how to align it. Look out here, got some grease. Um, and all I did is you just smear a little bit on the end here. Uh, this I ordered off of eBay. It was, oh, $70, $75, something like that. Um... But it is cut to a specific diameter and that sort of thing. Here, here, and here. That is very important that that's correct and very important that you order it for the Mercruiser stuff. The Volvo stuff is different. Um, I think it'll work. I know it worked for Pre Alpha, Alpha 1, and Bravo 1. I don't know if it'll work beyond that, you know, the Bravo 2s and stuff. I don't know, but I know it'll work on, like I said, pre-alpha, alpha one, and bravo one. So, and that's what I have here. And all you do, once you get your grease smeared on the end of it, you're just going to come in here. And this, What this is called is your gimbal housing, is what that is. And then that in there is your gimbal bearing. And you see the splines in there, is that's what we just replaced. So, you got to get lined up perfectly that part that we just replaced with that bearing there. So it's all nice and wonderful and happy and beautiful. So, what you do, you take this dude, stick it up in there, like so, and then you push in. And you see how it just, you know, coming out super harder. But you see how going in, once you get it in there, it just goes right in. Not a whole lot of effort involved in doing that. It just goes right in. Got to twist a little bit to pull it out, but that's it. That's how it's supposed to be. Nice and smooth like that. Um, if it... The hard part then, and I've, I've already messed with this a little bit to get to the point where it shows you how smooth it's supposed to go. The hard part is getting it to that point. This one actually wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. It, it started off a little bit rough and then I let the front down a little bit actually. Um, and that made it better. So the hard part is deciding, or I'm sorry, I let I put the front up. A little bit to bring the rear down I apologize front up bring the rear down so the hard part is which direction is gonna have to go when you're all done if you know you didn't have this issue and you just pulled it to I don't know what do some sort of other operation on there then you know you you may not have to change anything on there it, it may be perfect or it may go back and need just a little bit of adjustment up or down you know you, you just have to mess with it take it up once you know a couple just a couple turns on the nut see what happens if it gets better then you're doing it good if it gets worse then obviously you go in the wrong direction so you just have to play with that to get it there what i'm going to do now is i'm going to grease up all this in here and you know clean that out a little bit too Looks like some water has gotten in here at some point. So clean that up a little bit and then grease all this, just smother it in grease. And I'm probably also gonna do up the grease certs on either sides here and you know, just some maintenance really is what that is. Um, while you got this part, you're gonna also wanna feel what you're bearing in here feels like. And this one feels tight and it looks very new actually. So somebody had this apart very recently, I'd say, um, which is surprising that they didn't see that the, the the teeth in there were getting eaten and done something about it at the time, or they did, 
and that's why I have it and they don't have it. That's what I'm kind of going for most likely. So, um, lesson learned, always water test a boat before you buy it. Learn the hard way. Oh well, whatever. I I didn't have time to water test and that's why I didn't, but future, make time, water test it. So, I'll uh, grab the out drive and bring it back here. Actually, maybe move the boat forward instead. Yeah, whatever. And then I'll show you putting the out drive back on as well. Out here with the out drive, getting ready to put it back in. Um, so, like I said earlier, I went and I cleaned up around here. Uh, stuff, well, it's sitting in there now, but it's like some grease up on all this, the mechanism, ship, shifting mechanisms up in there. Um, and kind of cleaned this up a little bit as well. Uh, somebody has replaced the U joints on my out drive fairly recently from the looks of them. They look pretty new. You're going to want to check them, see if there's any play in it when you, you know, twist the drive shaft around and you'll flop it up and down. Make sure there's no play in them. If there's any bit of play in them, replace them right, right now. Because if that breaks, then it's going to destroy all that stuff up in there. And then you're looking at really, really expensive. But mine look pretty new. There's no play in them. So I went ahead and greased them. Mine have grease certs on them. If you do replace them, make sure you get the kind with grease certs on them. That way you can, you know, just do maintenance on them. Make them last longer. So in order to put this back in, you... Well, in and out. You've got to have it in full forward gear in order for it to allow it to go in and out. And that's for all normal rotation. Reverse rotation ones are full reverse. But most things are normal rotation, so it should just be forward. Um, and the reason for that is this little guy down here, this is what actually shifts the out drive. Each position that it's in changes what gear it's in, forward, neutral, reverse. And then there's a little sorry, get the camera down there. Eh, maybe not. There we go. There's a little dude in here. And that thing slides into that. So it's gotta be in forward so that way it can actually slide into it. Otherwise it won't. So we have our new gaskets. Always replace the gaskets to like five bucks. No reason not to. It comes with a whole bunch of O-rings. Um, you just got to find the one that fits the right thing for your intake water one. And that one, the biggest one for mine, is it. I've, I've always just used the biggest one because that's always what fits. I don't know, maybe other things have the smaller ones. I really don't know. I've never experienced that, but... Make sure it's the one that fits that. This guy, the big one, goes on here. And you can see the old one on here. Doesn't look bad, but I'm going to go ahead and replace it anyway. You know, it, I have it, might as well replace it. And then, of course, this your alien head goes, you know, odd this place. What I'm going to do, and what I've always done, is put gasket maker on it. Now, I use the black gasket maker which the which is maximum oil resistant because there's a lot of grease and stuff back here so you want something that's going to resist the oil heavy duty oil ap applications um safe on temperature and it's black so it matches that which is a nice bonus but this is good stuff i've used it on everything from boats to cars to you know random stuff it's good stuff i like it so that's what i'm going to use um, and I always recommend just smothering both sides of this thing in it, so that way you know that it seals. And, and I'll show you guys how to do that here in a minute. I'm going to get this pulled back out of the hole there, that way I can work on it. There we go. That way I can work on getting this bigger gasket out of the way. And then I'm going to show you uh, a little something on the shifter language, and then we're going to put it back in all right so what I was talking about on the shifter linkage here that you're gonna to want to make sure on is you can kind of see and I'm trying to balance the out drive right now so 
it ain't working out so good. Um, but you can see here, this thing goes inside of this little fork here. And that's what actually shifts everything. So you want to make sure that that's going to be in that fork when this whole thing goes together. Otherwise, it ain't going to work. Um, and you can see I put a little bit of grease on there because that's a moving point. Um, you know, smear a little bit over here to once again moving point. So you just want to make sure, you know, you can see now when it goes in and out, it's going to move that with it. And that, that's going to go in and out and it fits inside of the out drive here. So I'm going to get the way that I do it. Um, I cover all this in the gasket maker, put the gasket on, and then um, cover the outside of the gasket in the gasket maker as well. Then I put the out drive on. So I'm going to do that. And once again, I can't do that with one hand. And then I'll show you guys what that looks like. And um, then we'll get the out drive put on. All right, so here's what that looks like. What is done? You see, I took and ran it all the way around, around everything. And I already, you know, obviously did the other side of the gasket here too. But so that way it gets full coverage around everything when it smushes in there. It's going to be nice and tight and sealed. That's what you want. You don't want any water getting in here because then it gets into your uh, your U joints there and causes those to rust and corrode and break. And also, you know, start skin up into your bearings up in there and linkages, and it, it's a bad thing. You just don't want that. Um, you see, I got my O ring in there, and I put a whole bunch of that stuff in there too to kind of hold that in there. And I'm probably going to run a little bit more around the outside of it here too before I put the L drive on. Um, something that happened on mine when I'm pulling this out, the studs, two of these studs came out. Same thing as what happened on the back of the crank there. Um, you know, it's one of those things that happens right now and again. So what I'm going to do before putting this back in, I'm going to put some some of that thread locker on here as well, and then thread it into the hole. That way, hopefully, if I ever have to take this back off again, this don't happen again because you don't want that to happen. I mean, it's not. Not the end of the world, but it's not supposed to happen, so we'd like to keep that from happening. Now, putting the out drive back on is interesting. Um, it is heavy, it is awkward, and it helps a lot if you have a second person to help you out. Getting it lifted up on there and lined up and pushed in. But you're going to want the rams here your trim rams, they're going to have to go above the line here because that, that's where they go. So you have to find a way to get those held up. Either somebody holding them up or um, you know, tie them up or something like that before you put that on. Otherwise, you'll never get them back on. The other option is just pull them off of the gimbal housing back there too. I mean, you, you can do that. I just don't want to. I don't want to take apart more than I have to. So I'm going to tie them up somehow and then get it slipped in. Obviously, I'm not going to be able to show you guys how I put this in. I'd like to do that because it can be a little bit tricky. But that's going to definitely take both hands to do and then some. And, you know, there's no way of holding this camera while doing that. So I'll get it put in there um, and then... We'll get it tightened down and put on. We'll check and make sure that it's going in the gear the way that it's supposed to. And then we'll get the rams bolted back on. And then we'll finish buttoning a few things up on the inside and then we're done. Alright, got it back on there. Now, like I said, it is a bear by yourself. Um, but it's in there. What I always do, I always take a paper towel, you know, run around the goo that comes out from the sealant there. Just kind of smooth that out. You don't have to. I mean, you can just leave it as it was. That's fine. But I just like doing that. Um, I go by the real good and tight policy on all the bolts, or nuts rather, around here. There's probably an actual spec on what they're supposed to be tightened down to, but real good and tight. It just kind of works. 
um, and you want to make sure you go back around them a couple times as you you know as it gets sucked up on there by them the one you just tightened up may be loose so make sure you go around a couple times make sure it's on there um, you're getting ready to put the rams back on the deal here and this big long bolt is what it is make sure just like everything on the inside there make sure you put everything the way it came so that way you know how to put it back because I know I won't remember if I didn't do it that way but that just goes like that and then it goes in that hole um, now all you gotta do is just lift up with one hand here cram this in the other side and then you want to tap it with a hammer and just tap it through there don't go nuts on it just you know light tap just to help it along and then it'll be good um, so we'll get that shoved in there and then go back on the inside and finish buttoning everything up and then we'll do a water test and see what happens here um, and before I started doing you know, a lot of the videoing on the inside here I kind of already done a lot of this what I always do when I'm taking things apart I take pictures of wiring especially that I can make sure I get it back the way it came so you know take pictures of all this down here uh, what wire goes your coil back there I still got to zip tie all this up, um, but you know, just go over everything, make sure it went back the way that it came. All your linkage, your shift linkage here, if it wasn't causing any problems before, try and make sure that you don't turn this little guy, and there's a little brass one up in there as well. If you weren't having problems with it, with the shifting itself, then don't turn those. Because it was fine where it was, so don't mess with it. The same thing with your throttle over here. If you weren't having trouble with the throttle you know, coming in or out at, at wrong time or anything, leave it alone. Just leave it alone. It, it's easier that way. Um, you want to make sure that you get, if you took the carb off like I did, make sure you get your little guy hooked back up over here. Uh, it's just got a little Jesus clip on the inside there. Um, and you just go over everything once, make sure everything is tight, even if you didn't mess with it. You know, make sure everything's tight. Your own hose and everything run over it once with the uh, screwdriver there, make sure everything's tight. Um, and then that's pretty much it on the engine here. You want to double and triple check your exhaust boots back there. Make sure you got both of those tight. And then there is the inlet water inlet hose right down there you want to make sure you got that tight too that is actually kind of sort of pressurized not a whole lot of pressure but there is pressure in that so it will leak and the last thing you want is water in the boat you want the water on the outside of the boat i'm not really going to show you guys reassembling this because every boat's different on reassembling all your stuff back here i'll show you guys the end product that you can see what it looks like um for the sea right here but you know, like I said, every boat's different, so I'm not going to waste your or my time. I'll show you how to reassemble something that pertains nothing to your boat. The engine and the outdrive there, that's the same on a lot of boats. Like everything, for the most part. Small variances, but pretty much the same. So I'll get that put together, then I'll show you guys. Um, you know what it looks like anyway, that you can see what it looks like. I'll put it back together. And then. We're going to go see what the water looks like. It's kind of you know, cloudy and windy and nasty. So we'll see if it's rough or not. If it's not too rough, we'll take it out. If it's rough, I'm not going to take it out today. I'm not going to take a boat out that I don't trust yet in rough water. So we'll maybe we'll do that a different day. We'll see. There we go. All put back together. That's what it looks like. This is actually kind of a cool setup. Only three, you got a little bit of storage. This one actually came with a uh, enclosure for the rear here. I don't know if it works or not. I haven't tried it, but you know, there it is. Um, and I've just been putting it back in there, out of the way. Don't have to worry about it. So, and uh, the side cushions over there you know, on the side but that's it back together we'll, we'll take a drive down to the water see what it looks like and uh, take it out if not then I'll uh, 
I'll tape the first trip out anyway. There you guys see it running and going to the end product. But it is not super hard to do. Just time consuming really. Hopefully this video helped you guys out. Uh, if you have any questions, ask in the comments there and I'll do my best to answer them. Um, otherwise, see you next time. We're out here on it. We're in Little, Little Sturgeon Bay here. I'm just kind of idling. Now you can hear. It's a lot rougher once I got out here than I thought it would be. But, we're here. It runs, it goes, going all the way out onto uh, Green Bay itself out there and back. No problems. Not able to really open it up. It's too choppy. It's not, this ain't even choppy. This is just straight up waves. If I try, if I try to open it up, it would devour this boat. But we got a lot further than we did last time. Runs good. Feels like it has plenty of power. I think once I get it on some water that's smooth enough, it ought to be able to do, you know, probably 30, 40. The guy said they'd do 45, but he also said it's ready to go, so, you know. But just want to show you guys, it's going. Here, a little sturgeon. Wisconsin.